सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाषा वह ओ शांति 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 नम श्री शंकरानंद नम श्री शंकरानंद गुरुपादाबुजन्मने गुरुपादाबुजन्मने सविलास महामोह सविलास महामोह ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणे ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणे समासक्त यथाचित जंतोर विषय गोचरे यद्यम ब्रह्मणी सो न मुचेत बंधना जस्ट एज द माइंड ऑफ एन ऑर्डनरी पर्सन इज अटैच टू द सेंस ऑर्गन्स बिकॉज इट इज नेचुरल टेंडेंस इज द माइंड टू रन टू द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर इट्स ग्रेटिफिकेशन so how effortlessly one's mind abides in the sense organs or the thoughts of sense organs hence objects yadi evam in the same manner yadi brahmani syat that happens with reference to brahman that one's mind similarly effortlessly abides in the self in brahman kon mutchet bandhanat then who is there who will not be liberated from this bondage <coughs> so in short mind is the ability to both mind can dwell on vishaya sense objects or mind can dwell upon the self both these possibilities the mind has which was explained manohid dvidham praktam shuddham cha shuddham eva cha that mind is said to be twofold shuddham ashuddham pure and impure sometimes they say that maya also is of two kinds vidya maya and avidya maya maya is also generally we say maya always binds but no maya also releases if the maya is of the nature of rajas and tamas then it is avidya maya binding maya if the maya is satvik then it is releasing maya that's the reason why even maya also is worship as goddess so in india maya also is worship which is see the concept of the lord like brahma is the saraswati and narayana has lakshmi lord shiva has parvati so maya also becomes a releasing force when it is satvik maya so maya and the mind are essentially the same and so because mind is the product of maya so mind also can be either way it can be pure or impure ashuddham kama samparkat shuddham kama vivarjitam kama samparkat anakala samparka or contact with kama with desire and the resulting uh resulting impulses such as anger etc so mind that is prone to these kind of impulses is ashuddham is called impure mind shuddham kama vivarjitam there is a mind that is free from such impulses of lust and anger and whatever so mind such as that is called pure mind in short a reacting mind can be said to be an impure mind and a contemplative mind can be said to be a pure mind मनयो मनुष्या कारण बंधमोक्ष बंधा विषयासक्त मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत मन एव मनुष्या बंधमोक्ष कारण इट इज माइंड अलोन विच इज कारण ऑफ द कॉज फॉर द बॉन्डेज द सेम माइंड कैन ऑल्सो बिकम द कॉज फॉर लिबरेशन बंधा विषयासक्त द माइंड दट इज विषयासक्त अटैच टू देंस ऑब्जेक्ट माइंड दट इज एक्सट्रोवर्ड bandhaya is a cause of bondage why is it so why should you say that the mind that is running after the sense objects will bring about a bondage for the very simple reason that it is running after the external things where happiness is not this is the whole idea that atma the self is of the nature of happiness 
And even when we experience happiness, so when we experience a desirable object, and the experience happiness comes in the presence of a desirable object, it generally creates in our mind the thought that the happiness has come from the object. But the idea is that that external object only becomes a, an instrument for manifestation of the happiness that is one's own nature. So happiness is one's own nature, except that it remains unmanifest today. It requires something to to bring it to manifestation. So an external sense object, something very desirable, when I meet it, then the happiness which is unmanifest becomes manifest. We think that happiness is created. Happiness is not created, unmanifest happiness becomes manifest. Not that a non-existent happiness comes into existence, but an existent but unmanifest happiness comes to manifestation. This is what happens. <coughs> and therefore, when somebody, is, when one thinks about it, then one realizes, as we'll see in Viveka Chodamani, the very same topic is going on in Viveka Chodamani also, as to how the person, when one has decided that happiness means this, the mind already has its own concept of what happiness is. And when that mind meets with that situation, feels happy. And it also has its own idea of what unhappiness is, and therefore when confronted with that situation, becomes unhappy. It is trained that way. Like we can train a dog to respond to different situations in different ways. This person is called an outsider, bark at him. This one is an insider, and therefore, uh, play with him. It depends on how you train the dog. So, somebody who is outsider also can be trained, can be, you can always train the dog to become friendly to him in whatever. Similarly also, mind seems to have its preconceived ideas of what is good and what is bad, or what is the, what is the cause of happiness, what is the cause of unhappiness. And that's why the mind goes from one to the other situation, searching for that happiness. And therefore, that Vishaya Sakti, that attachment to the sense objects, or meaning attachments, or this idea that I will gain the happiness, or security, or fullness, from something other than me, it only arises from Aviveka, or non-discrimination. So mind which does not have the Aviveka, or discrimination, is a mind which causes bondage, because it does things which further and further, it gets further and further entangled. And mind which has Viveka, and therefore Vairagya is a mind that becomes a cause for liberation. So therefore, what is said here is, the mind which is Vairagya, freedom from passions, of likes and dislikes, is called a pure mind, and that becomes a cause for liberation, for freedom. And finally in the verse 118, Prasannatma Atmanisthitva Sukhamakshaya Mashnude. It was said in verse 114 that Prasannatma, one whose mind is, has become pure and transparent, Atmanisthitva, abiding in the self, Akshayam Sukhamashnude. So, mind which is pure naturally abides in the self. Mind which is pure meaning which has this dispassion which is free from the distractions of likes and dislikes, automatically abides in itself. And mind which is under influence of likes and dislikes, automatically runs out towards objects of likes and dislikes. So, prasannatma, one whose mind has become prasannam, transparent, pure, atmanisthitva, that person abiding in the self, sukham akshaya mashnude, he attains that inexhaustible happiness which is the nature of the self. That Artha, the Shruti Swamiva Prapanchayati in the verse 118, that part of the verse is explained here in greater detail in the verse 118. Samadhi Nirdhuta Malasya Chetasaha Samadhi Nirdhuta Malasya Chetasaha Niveshita Syatma Niyat Sukham Bhavet Niveshita Syatma Niyat Sukham Bhavet Na shakyate varna itum giratada Na shakyate varna itum giratada Swayam tadantah karane na grihyade Swayam tadantah karane na grihyade Samadhi nirdhuta malasya chetasaha 
आत्मनि निवेशित चेतस युखम भवत तद गिरा वर्णय न शक्य सी दाइन निर्धूत मल से मल मीन्स इंप्योरिटी निर्धूत मल से दैट ऑफ द इंप्योरिटी हैव बीन वॉस्ट अवे एंड हाउ आर द इंप्योरिटी द माइंड वॉस्ट अवे बिकॉज ऑफ समाधि आत्मनि प्रत्येक स्वरूप निवेशित सामधिर्धूत मल से सामधि प्रत्येक ब्रह्मण ऐक्य गोचर प्रत्यावृत्या निर्धूत मल से निशेषेण निवारित रजस्तमो मल से चेतस एज द माइंड कम्स इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद पीस ऑफ द सेल्फ इवन इज यू ट्राई टू मेडिटेट एंड ड्वेल अपॉन द साइलेंस विच इज द नेचर ऑफ द सेल्फ टू एक्सटेंड द माइंड रिमेन साइलेंट to that extent it becomes to extend that the mind comes in contact with that silence which is natural to that extent mind also becomes purified because the silence of the mind experience is a very soothing effect and also has a cleansing effect and therefore this when the mind abides in the self with this knowledge pratyek brahmano ho ऐक्य गोचर प्रत्य आवृत्या वन वन हेन इज वन हैज इज नॉलेज दट पूर्ण हम आई एम कंप्लीट अहम ब्रह्मास्मी आई एम ब्रह्म आई एम कंप्लीट आई एम द साइलेंस आई एम द सेल्फ ऑफ ऑल आई एम एवरीथिंग इज नो लैक इन आई वेन दिस नॉलेज इज देयर एंड वेन वन ऑल ऑल द टाइम ट्राइज टू अवॉइड वन स्माइन इन दिस विजन so every time or any time the mind even slightly abides in this vision to that extent the mind becomes purified whenever the mind comes in contact with something that is pure it becomes purified if you have some impure water you keep on adding pure water into that how the total mass of the water becomes purified or better still that the ganges is something that is pure and sacred and sometimes even the from the villages even the sewage water you know the little stream of sewage water also enters the ganges and how it becomes purified so also our mind when it comes in contact with anything that is pure or sacred also becomes purified that's the reason why the always say keep on repeating in your mind something that is sacred that's why keep repeating the name of lord because even the repetition of the name and that being the name of lord which is inherently divine or pure but just by repetition also by the contact that the mind has with the name of the lord or the praise of the lord chanting his hymns or reciting the scriptures and vedas and gita and whatever so all of these by nature being what they are to the extent that we have our mind engage in those things to that extent they have a very cleansing effect upon the mind and we ourselves experience it so often that in a temple here for example when some nice chanting is going on that is a, a, a harmony several people are chanting together and a harmonious rhythmic chanting is going on or reciting is going on or kirtan is going on how it has a very soothing effect upon the mind the mind becomes quiet and therefore a good thing is to keep on exposing the mind to that keep on exposing mind to vedanta which all the time tells us and makes us see that you are fine you are all right you are free you are beautiful any moment i see this fact even to some extent to that extent the mind is exposed to the self it, ex- it is exposed to the truth or the self and that that's how it has a very soothing and purifying effect and think of the yogi who seeks to abide his mind in the self which is self in the knowledge that i am full i am complete i am brahma and that thought is repeated constantly then as this thought is repeated in the mind slowly slowly whatever left over samskaras are there of extrovertedness of some little reactions of rajas and tamas whatever is that it keeps on getting slowly slowly washed away and thus the mind becomes pure therefore here it says samad nirdhut nirdhut malasya chetasah chetasah of the mind of which the mala mala is impurity meaning rajas and tamas 
have been slowly and slowly washed away, have been removed, shaken away. Nirdhura nishyeshena nivarita rajas tamamalasya, the mind from which the rajas and tamas have been totally eliminated. Because of samadhi. Samadhi means because of dwelling upon the self. Niveshitasya atmani. Atmani pratyak sarupe niveshitasya. On account of the fact that the mind is made to abide in the self, which is the pratyak, which is the, uh, the, the atma, which is the nature of one's own self. Yet sukham bhavayat ultimately, when the mind is being completely purified of any impurity or the distracting factors, and when the mind effortlessly abides in the self, just as the mind of a person seeking sense gratification abides in the sense object, and so also the mind of a yogi effortlessly abides in the self. Tada yat sukham bhavet. At that time, what happiness one experiences, or, or happiness one gains. So the happiness of the self, it was said earlier, prashanta manasam heram yoginam sukham uttvam upaydi shantarajasam Brahma Bhutam Akalmasham. So when the yogi's mind has become shanta, become free from those factors like Ragadvesha which create a shanti, then that Sukham Upayati Yoginam, that very happiness comes to the yogi. He gets filled with that happiness. And the happiness with which he is filled, which is his own nature. Whatever that happiness is, na shakyate varani tumgira. That tada utpannam sukham, tada samadha utpannam tat sukham. Meaning that happiness which fills one's heart when the mind has become pure and mind abides in the self. That happiness which fills up one's heart, tada gira vacha varanayitum na shakyade. It is not possible to describe a happiness by one's, in one's own words. So understand that all that ocean of happiness is within me, is my own nature. One doesn't have to run around in search for happiness, or silence, or peace. That's all he says. And it is possible to totally own up that. It's a matter of owning up myself. All I'm doing right now, whenever I feel unhappy, is because I do disown myself. And that disowning happens only on account of the lack of vivek or discrimination. Because the mind has some thoughts that happiness means something. And so the mind all the time tries to create the situation which it calls happiness. Creates a situation which it calls security. But all the time, the very ocean of happiness is one's own nature. That just stands denied. That stands disowned. The yogi is the one who owns up that. And the only, as I said, owning up all that it requires is to remove the obstacle. Which again is nothing but abhiveka or non-discrimination. So non-discrimination, which brings about attachments, aversions, which brings a sense of individuality, brings about attachments, aversions. So as one works with this, one scrutinizes each one of the reactions in the light of one's understanding and seeks to resolve them. That's the process. And that's how constantly we work at removing the obstacles, removing the obstacles. I don't have to acquire the self. I don't have to do anything to become happy. I just have to remove the obstacles that stand between me and the happiness. Na shakyade sukham atyantikam yattat buddhi grahya matindriyam Lord Krishna said that happiness atyantikam that which doesn't have an end, which doesn't have any boundary, that boundless happiness Atindriyam, which is not generated as a result of an experience of a sense organ, which is the nature of the self, which wells up from one, as na- one's own nature. Buddhi grahyam, and that one is very much aware of. So buddhi meaning the mind is not projecting any duality, but still the mind is aware for. And so buddhi grahyam atindriyam, vaiti yogi comes to know that happiness as his own nature. In fact, you can't, dis- can't describe any happiness. It is something to be known, that's all. They say, suppose you eat jaggery. You f- how can you describe a taste of jaggery? Assuming jaggery is something that makes you happy, I mean, you know, it's... Uh, or whatever, candy or anything. 
it's difficult to describe those things anyway. And still, this happiness anyway cannot, is incomparable, cannot be compared with any experiential happiness because any experiential happiness is something that is generated from an external cause. This is the Swabhavikam Nirnamittam, not generated, something that is natural. So that happiness, he says, cannot be described in words. Alaukika Sukhatva Dityartha, say the Tikakara, because Alaukika, it's not Laukika. Loka means, Laukika means the happiness generated by, from the sense contact, Alaukika Tva, not being generated from the sense contact, therefore you cannot compare it with anything else. Swayam tadantah karanayana grahyade kintu swayam tad sarubhutam sukham antah karanayana yuva grahyade However, that sarubhutam sukham, that happiness which is one's own nature, antah karanayana yuva grahyade is not available for description by words, etc. Something that is seen or something that is known, something that is experienced, if you want to say, by one's own mind. So one is aware of it in one's own mind. So this is how that discussion is concluded. The quotation that whatever he was said by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita is the same thing that is said in, in the scriptures also. And so this Maitra and Ishaka, so from that these eight verses were quoted. Now a question is asked, continuing the verse 119. Nanu asseva samadehe durlabhattvat Katham anena brahmananda nishya sambhavahaiti Question is, Asseva samadehe durlabhattvat But this samadhi, this total avoidance or absorption in oneself, durlabhattvat, is something that is extremely difficult to attain. It is not possible for the mind to become that silent or that tranquil and that it abides in the self for any length of time. It is something that is extremely difficult to attain. Katham anena brahmananda nishya sambhavaha So if the mind cannot abide in the self in this manner, how would it be possible for someone to come to this ascertain or from this understanding or this conclusion or conviction rather that I am Brahma, how can that conviction arise? If, because for the mind to abide in that knowledge that I am Brahma is so difficult, how would it be possible for one to come to this conviction that I am Brahma, that I am happiness or I am fullness, how can that conviction be generated in one? Iti ashankyaha, with this ashanka or doubt, the verse 1919 is said here. Yadyapya sauchiram kalam, yadyapya sauchiram kalam, samadhir durlabho nirnam, samadhir durlabho nirnam. Tatha pikshani ko brahma, tatha pikshani ko brahma, nandam nischaya yatyasau, nandam nischaya yatyasau. Yadyabhi asau samadhi chiram kalam dranam durlabha. Yadyabhi even though asau samadhi, this samadhi that we talked about, samadhi means absorption in the self, here we are talking about Jnana Samadhi. We are not talking about Andha Samadhi, meaning just merely simple absorption in the, and then it will just become an experience. But here we are talking about Jnana Samadhi, meaning an awareness in the mind of that I am fullness. Not just experience of fullness, but an awareness. This awareness or understanding that I am the fullness. And so, an abidance in this knowledge that I am fullness. Where Aham Brahma, that Vritti, Oh, that understanding keeps on being, just keeps on repeated there, or keep, it persists there. With mind being chanchalam, being restless, asthiram being unsteady, it is extremely difficult for the mind to abide in any one object. Then what to talk of that mind abiding in the self, which is subtler than the subtlest? And therefore, asya samadehe, santatasya asambhavebi, even though it is impossible almost, or extremely difficult, that for a great length of time, samadhi such as that may be, may be, may obtain. Kshanika siddhasya sambhavat, but definitely kshanika for a moment. So when, for a moment the mind can see this. It will not be difficult that when the mind becomes com- contemplative, that for a moment it will be to abide in the silence. 
and see this truth that the silence or the fullness I am. Even a momentary appreciation or apprehension of oneself takes place. Shani Kobi, even a momentary apprehension that yes, Ananda I am. So, a direct apprehension, when one directly apprehends that fullness, not merely works out of the intellect, but one sees it by oneself, that fullness I am. Tena, I am Ananda, Nishchetum Shakyate. That's enough. Even a momentary apprehension also becomes enough. Brahmanandam asau nischayati. It actually gives rise to nischaya or a conviction of Brahmananda that Brahmananda I am. So all that one needs is, as we said, of course, even that momentary apprehension also is not that easy. But still, when one constantly is striving and constantly working with oneself, as I said, working with whatever, this sense of ego, when the reactions arising from that, as one is constantly working with them, constantly exposing oneself to the study and the contemplation. And of course, as you said, wherever necessary, with the prayers. When one constantly applies oneself to this, then definitely when one comes to even a momentary conviction that that's right, I am that fullness, I am the happiness, even that also, that momentary apprehension or perception also is enough to generate in me this conviction <coughs> that I am Brahma. The self is of the nature of Brahmananda, that conviction, even that momentary abidance of the mind can also generate. <coughs> but again a question is asked, no, no. Atma darshanaya shramanado prabhuttaha api keshida. So we find that many people have been, we find that many people who are engaged in constant study and listening of the scriptures. We find many people engaged in the shravanam meaning listening to the scriptures and reflecting upon them. So people are engaged in this. Atma darshanaya and also with a desire for the knowledge of the self, the people who are enga engaging themselves in the study and in the reflection upon the scriptures. Kechit bahir mukhaha eva vartante Still we find many of these people also Bahir Mukha, still extrovert. Ananda Nischa Shunyaha. Still, still in them that Nischa of the conviction, that Ananda I am, that conviction has not yet arisen in them. And therefore we still find them extrovert. Because the mind seeks happiness. And if it doesn't get it from the self, it has to get it from somewhere. And therefore one keeps on exploring other sources of happiness when one has not been able to see it with oneself. When one does not get the tranquility of the peace with oneself, well, the mind has a need and therefore it will explore other sources. So we find that many people who are engaged in the study and listening and the study of the scriptures, still not having developed a conviction about the self as Brahma, we find them still Bahir Mukha, meaning extrovert. <coughs> Why is it so? Iti Ashankya. Shraddhadrahitanam Tasatvepi. What is that that makes a difference now? Shraddha, Lord Krishna says, Shraddhavan labhate jnanam. Who is the one who gains the knowledge? Shraddhavan. One is possessed of the abundance of Shraddha. Shraddha dirhitanam. Shraddha, well, Lord Krishna describes that. Shraddhavan labhate jnanam tat paraha sanyatendriyaha. In the fourth chapter, Shraddhavan labhate jnanam. The one who is the Shraddha. Shraddha where? Shraddha in the teacher. Shraddha in the scriptures. Shraddha in oneself. Shraddha the trust of the faith in one's own self. That is, I can do it. And that is how overall Shraddha the faith one has. Then why do we require faith? Faith is required for that which has not yet become a matter of my knowledge. Except for the faith that we are required or asked to have in Vedanta, is different from the faith that we are asked to have in some other uh, in, in some other uh, traditions. When it is said that the liberation will come after death, so wherever they talk of liberation after death, then it is a matter of faith because I will never be able to 
uh, never be able to apprehend it in my life and therefore it will always remain for me a matter of faith but here however the freedom is not after that freedom or liberation is something that is here and now because it is my nature in fact it is emphasized that this should be attained even when I am in this body because the human body and the human equipment is the right and appropriate equipment to attain that then the only then the shraddha the faith that I have to keep is until there is pending discovery it can be discovered in my own life and so until I discover that there is a question of faith and not, and not all the time but the shraddha or the faith is required it's very important if the faith is not there that faith of course is meaning the conviction an inner feeling a feeling from inside that yes this is right that what the Upanishad says is right what the teacher says is right that all this is it makes sense to me and I have no difficulty in terms of seeing that they are true that the statements the scriptures are true I have no difficulty for whatever reason there is no resistance in the mind mind is able to see this fact and absorb it I mean, if it is there it is there or one has to actually pray for it and have it but when this shraddha is there the mind becomes like a sponge and how the sponge absorbs that water so also the mind absorbs the teaching so here the, the author wants to say that the shraddha is an extremely important factor see when shraddha is there tat paraha sanyatendriya then alone a commitment comes in me if I, I may do something alright but still it will not be a wholehearted effort I won't be able to put my heart and soul into an effort unless there is a total conviction if there are doubts or if there are questions if the mind has questions about certain things I won't be able to put my heart and soul in that so that's the reason why even though the people are engaged in studies people were engaged in the spiritual pursuit all right but still if that conviction has not developed in them that the, the scripture the provision of the scriptures and the teachers is, is right if that conviction is somehow not developed that mind will never be able to commit it won't have its emotional investment there I cannot have emotional investment in something in which I do not have a conviction from within so this is what this is a new term I've learned emotional investment you know and so it's important it's a nice thing Emot- I invest myself and when do I invest myself when I emotion is something the most precious thing to invest and when, I, when would I do that when I trust that it is in the right place See, that is what we mean by heart and soul, that one puts one heart and soul behind this. And that is where the problem is. That is where there is always some doubting thing inside, and that always comes in the way of my total commitment to this. And therefore a lot of effort also does not become fruitful, because the shraddha is lacking. Shraddha van labhade jnanam tatparaha. When shraddha is there, tatparada. A commitment comes. And when a commitment comes, automatically my mind doesn't want anything else. And therefore the mind automatically drops and gives up all the other activities, other sense pursuits and stuff like that. Those other pursuits of happiness have no place anymore. Sanyatendriya. He becomes one whose indriya or the sense organs are disciplined, meaning all of them are agreeable to him. So he becomes one for whom the mind and sense organs and the whole personality becomes agreeable or favorable so he attains the favor of his own self which is so important what I need is my own self my own self being together if one part of myself runs this way other part of the self runs that way it becomes very difficult so here the person is together so that shraddha shraddhari matam tan nischayo bhavati eva says here that those people who possess the shraddha etc in them this conviction definitely arises and that is said in the verse 120 shraddha lor vyasani yotra shraddha lor vyasani yotra nischino teva sarvatha nischino teva sarvatha nischite da sakrutasmin nischite da sakrutasmin vishwasityanyat apyayam vishwasityanyat apyayam shraddhaluhu vyasani two things 
Vyasana means, one meaning of the Vyasana is addiction. One meaning of the Vyasana is addiction. But the word Vyasana is used here in the sense of conviction actually. So conviction or let's say determination, a commitment, Vyasana. Shraddhaluhu Vyasani. Who is Shraddhaluhu? The one who possesses Shraddha, as we just described. And Vyasani. What is Vyasanam? Vyasanam means a commitment, a firm commitment. Sarvatha Sampadaishyami. Avasyam. Sarvatha means Avasyam Sampadaishyami. At any rate, I am going to attain my objective. This is Vyasanam. A total commitment to one's objective. It is said about Gautama Buddha. He declared, even if this body drops off, even if the earthquake happens, even if the lightnings fall, anything can happen. I am not going to get up, I am not going to leave this place unless I gain the enlightenment. This was his conviction. And so, anyway, that, because any, any accomplishment in life requires a commitment or a conviction. Nothing comes, nothing comes without our commitment and our, our, uh, I mean, our committed pursuit. So how do we expect, you know, to attain an abidance in oneself without that kind of a commitment? So it requires a total commitment. Sarvatha sampadishami, avasyam sampadishami, at any rate. And I'm definitely, I'm going to accomplish the end that I have in mind. This kind of a commitment is called vyasana. Vyasana means conviction or that commitment, a committed conviction. Tadvan Vyasani. So here Shraddha. When Shraddha is there, when that kind of an implicit faith is there, the mind is no questions, no doubts, and therefore its path is very clear. And then Shraddha alone is not enough. What is also required is a pursuit, a, a total commitment and a to, a, an effort, you know, a total determined effort on my part. So Shraddha also is there, faith also is there, and a determined effort also is there. So Shraddhavan tat paraha sanyata indriyaha vyasaniya atra atra means samadhu meaning one who is committed to gaining that abidance in oneself nischanoti eva sarvatha sarvatha avasyam avasyam nischanoti he definitely gains that nischaya or the conviction that brahma brahma i am or brahmananda i am that conviction which comes from him from a momentary apprehension of oneself that he definitely gains Tatahakim, suppose one gains that kind of nischaya or a conviction or apprehension of oneself, so what happens? A momentary apprehension of oneself also gives me that, that you know, the firm conviction that yes, this is true. There is no more shraddha now, then it becomes knowledge. Until then, there is a question of shraddha. But when I see that fact for myself, that yes, that fullness I am, freedom I am, when that fact is very clearly perceived by me, even for a moment, the Shraddha or the faith has been transferred now, transformed into knowledge. Then what happens? Tatahkim, suppose that kind of a conviction has arisen, then what? Nishchidetu sakrutasmin vishwasidhi api anyada, vishwasidhi anyada api ayam. Nishchidetu sakrutasmin Asmin Brahmananda Sakrat Ekada Kshanika Samadho Nishchite Sati In this Brahmananda, even once, even for a moment also, when this kind of a conviction has arisen, even for a moment about oneself, meaning that conviction about myself without any doubt and error has arisen, even for a moment. Vishwasiti Abhi Anyada Ayam Sakra Nishchayavan Anyada Abhi Itarasmin Nabhikale Vishwasiti Then, he keeps that in mind at other times also. Even though at other times his mind is not abiding in the self. And still, that conviction is there that I know what it is. And therefore, he keeps that conviction all the time in his mind. Ananda hasti iti vishwasam karodi. Therefore, now he is vishwasa. Now he has this faith. More than the faith. Now he has this, let us say, resolution in his mind. That ananda hasti. He is resolved that ananda ha, that ananda I am. So, he doesn't have any doubt about that. The idea is that, even though it is difficult for the mind to abide in this ananda for any length of time, even it is difficult for it to abide even for a moment, 
unless there is a total commitment on the part of oneself. But once even that momentary commitment has arisen, then that remains very firmly embedded in one's own mind in the memory that that is because nobody can shake that. When it is something that I have myself directly apprehended, it cannot be shaken. And I would not be shaken by other experience. Even if I am shaken, my mind can come back to that. <coughs> ananda hastiti vishwasam that there is ananda. This vishwasa or the resolution arises in its mind. So then that becomes one's uh, basis for ultimately converting even that momentary perception into a full time, well, it's necessary that the effort must continue and one must gain an abidance in the self. But that effort becomes more accelerated and the commitment also grows and everything happens when I have a conviction of my own that yes, this Ananda I am. All right, suppose he has seen himself momentarily. Suppose in him has arisen this resolving in his mind that fine, that is what I am. Then also what? Tatopikim. Tatra says verse 121. Tadruk Pumanu Dasina. Tadruk Pumanu Dasina. Kale Pyananda Vasanam. Kale Pyananda Vasanam. Upeksha Mukhyamanandam. Upeksha Mukhyamanandam. Bhava Yatjeva Tatparaha. Bhava Yatjeva Tatparaha. Tadruk Puman. Person of that nature. Tadruk Puman. Puman means person. Tadruk of that nature. Shraddhadu Purasaram Sakram Nishayavan Purushaha. So, thus in whom even once this firm conviction has arisen on account of the Shraddha and the concerted effort in whom even this moment, one momentary conviction has arisen is no more Paroksha Jnanam, is a Paroksha Jnanam. Paroksha Jnanam meaning an indirect knowledge is there, I can understand things in my intellect, but to see it as my own self is what we call the Aparoksha Jnanam. And that Aparoksha Jnanam, our immediate apprehension has arisen even for a moment, for such a person. Udasina Kalebi Ananda Vasanam Upeksha. How oh, then, even such a person when he gains that he does not have now a value for any other happiness, he does not allow himself to be tempted to any other kind of happiness because that's all he wants. As the Swamiji says, once one has, one has tasted the height, one has tasted the height, one does not want to settle for anything less. When you had the taste of the Madras coffee, freshly brewed and whatever, then you cannot settle. I assume that's what it must be, you know. I have never tasted it. But then, Swami keeps on telling us that once you have tasted the Madras coffee, where the coffee beans have been freshly ground in the morning, you can never settle for anything less than that. You can never settle for any other coffee. Similarly also when one has seen that fullness which is oneself, one would not want to be to settle for anything less than that. And so a corner of the mind always desires that, always wants it and desires it. Audasinya dashayam api upalabhyamanam puroktam anandavasanam apeksha. Earlier it was said that when even our, in our ordinary experiences, when the mind becomes sattvic, momentarily, when the mind has become free from rajas and tamas, and mind has become sattvic, then also mind becomes silent, mind becomes abiding. It is an experience. But that is what we call the experience of Brahmananda. It was called Vasanananda. When there is knowledge, it is called Brahmananda. When knowledge is not there, but mere experience is there, when the mind becomes tranquil and abiding, that is called Vasanananda. Meaning, the Ananda of Brahma, but still sort of reflected in the state of mind, which also one wants. That's the reason why people always want that experience. Even a person takes drugs or whatever they do, 
and when they gain experience of certain states of mind, they want it again and again. And also through yoga and many other spiritual practices also people gain variety of experiences and they want to recreate them again and again. So here also suppose this person gains an experience of a total tranquility of the mind which was called Vasanananda, Upeksha, he even disregards that. He doesn't want to be even satisfied by that. So this is called Rasaswada. Gaudapada Acharya describes four kinds of obstacles to the abidance in oneself. One is Laya, other is Vikshepa, third is Kashaya, and fourth is Rasaswada. When one starts to meditate, first obstacle that can arise is Laya, is sleep. Because mind gets, you know, is not yet accustomed to keep awake for any length of time and, and to focus its attention on, on something which is subtle. And so mind falls asleep, Laya. First obstacle. Second obstacle is Vikshepa, distraction. Now it abides in the object of meditation and then it gets distracted. Then third is that even when it becomes free from Vikshepa, still it has difficulty in focusing upon the object of meditation. Because Kashaya, some kind of uh, thoughts, some kind of undigested thoughts seem to arise at that time and still prevent the mind from abiding. And fourth is Rasaswada. So thus this Tamas and Rajas and whatever undigested impressions are there, when all of them have gone away, then the mind becomes abiding. Still there is an experience of that, that Ananda, which is called Rasaswada. Gaudavalachari says that, let not your mind even settle with that. Realize that this is still an experience. Ananda I am. And therefore, the mind may have a tendency to enjoy the experience. For example, in the morning, the mind has a tendency to keep enjoying that little experience of sleep. Doesn't want to get up. And similarly also, the mind would have a tendency to enjoy that experience of tranquility. Just so now, that, that also becomes an obstacle because uh, mind is still deprived from the knowledge that I am that silence or tranquility. So this is Rasaswada. The Rasaswada is described here as Vasanananda. So Vasanandam Upeksha. The wise man or this seeker here, he even disregards that, doesn't get even tempted by that. Mukhyam Anandam Bhavati Bhavati Eva Tatparaha. Tatparaha Mukhyanande Tatparyavan Bhutva. And therefore, his tatparya, his commitment only remains to Mukhyananda, meaning his commitment remains to the self which is Brahma, which he has seen. And his commitment only remains to that. And he does not settle for anything else. Even for an experience of tranquility or ananda, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be tempted or doesn't want to be obstructed by that. Tameva bhavati, in his mind, he all the time dwells upon that one. Even though his mind may not abide, but his mind always is committed to that. And this is our, ex he explains it. In fact, he also gives an example of how one, uh, how one has experienced a certain thing, how the mind dwells upon that. Even though it is not a direct experience, still the mind only wants to dwell upon that and upon nothing else. Says here in the verse 1, evam vyavahara kale bi nijanannam bhavadidhyatra drushtantamaha. <clears throat> in this manner even while he is doing his vyavahara let us say that even while he is pursuing his other activities during the day even then one corner of his mind bhavayati always dwells upon that nijananda that ananda of oneself about which he has a glimpse and that alone one corner of his mind always dwells upon that even though outwardly he is engaged in his activities and this is to explain that that is explained in the next two verses but in the one next verse 122 the author gives an example <coughs> not a very pleasant example but anyway it's an example 
परव्यसन नी नारी परव्यसन नी नारी व्यग्रा पिग्रह कर्मणि व्यग्रा पिग्रह कर्मणि तदेवा स्वादयत्यंत है तदेवा स्वादयत्यंत है परसंगर सायनम परसंगर सायनम परव्यसन नी नारे Gives an example of a woman, Paravyasanini, one who has fallen in love with somebody else. He's a married woman, all right, but still having fallen in love with somebody else and therefore courting somebody else's company. A paramar, that's how they translate it anyway. Gruha Karmani Vyagrabi. So even though he, she lives in her own house and she's performing her day to day activity, Tadeva Aswadeti Antaha, but inside, within her mind, she all the time dwells upon. Parasanga Rasayanam The joy that she experiences of the company of the other person This is what she all the time to have This is an example that has been mentioned earlier also in other context But Ram Krishna Paramahams used to give another example Of the uh, Of the uh, this, The maids, you know, these this girls in the village Or the ladies Who go in the morning for Fetching water from a well, village well I mean, they would perhaps walk I, one or two kilometers, however far the well is. Or they go to the river or whatever to fill water. And they carry two or three or four pots with them. A bigger and a little smaller and a little smaller. And they fill up all these pots with water and balance them one by one on their head. And maybe one pot maybe even in the hand, you know, like this, held in the, with, with one arm. And these ladies are returning home. So while they are returning, some others are going towards the well, you know, for fetching water. They meet on the way and they are friends, they talk. And so here is this woman having so many parts on her head, you know, and talking. So actually you have to pay attention to balance this. And still it looks like she is engaged in talking to her friend. But even while she is engaged in talking to her friend, one corner of her mind always is, it is you know, is there to maintain that balance. That's the reason why she can do whatever she does and still the balance is maintained. Because one corner of the mind does that. Similarly also, here whatever it is, here it gives an example of, of a person who has gained experience of somebody else's company or an intense experience in the gain and how one always dwells upon that or one always keeps on, I guess, dwelling upon that in one's own mind. So, in short, the outer vyavahara, all this engagement or the activities, in spite of doing those activities, it is possible to keep one's mind all the time thinking upon that experience or that knowledge or that, that momentary perception. And that's what is explained in the verse 23. Dastantike Yojati, that Dastantha illustration that is given is now connected with the Dastantha, that which is illustrated. Evam tatve pare shuddhe, evam tatve pare shuddhe, dhiro vishranti magataha, dhiro vishranti magataha, tadeva svada yatyantaha. Tadeva Swada Yatyantaha Bahir Vyavaharan Nabi Bahir Vyavaharan Nabi Evam Tatve Pareshuddhe Dhiro Vishranti Magataha Evam in the same manner as the example Dhiraha Dhira here is the, the enlightened one, the wise one Shuddhe Pare Tatve Vishranti Magataha one who has attained Vishranti. So Vishranti, Vishranti means a total repose. A total freedom from any exertion is called Vishranti. Shranti means exertion. Vishranti means a total freedom from exertion. So when one comes home, for example, after day's work, how one gets Vishranti? One can repose, you know, one has become totally free from all exertion. And one becomes totally reposed. Uh, similarly here, Suddhe pare tattve vishranti magadaha. Thus one who has reposed in one's own self, one has found that peace in one's own self, which is what? Shuddham param tattvam. 
the self which is tattva, param tattva, meaning that which is the self, self is the param, meaning free or free from limitation, shuddham which is pure, so one who has found a refuge in one's own self, that is pure and that is limitless and that is the truth of everything. Even when it is done momentarily, tadeva aswadedi antaha bahihi vyavaharan nabi. Such a person, even though he is doing vyavahara, even though he is functioning outside bahihi, even though he is transacting his business outside, he may be doing, performing his day-to-day activities that time alone, that time also, tadeva aswadedi. He only aswadedi. He all the time gains an aswada. Aswada means an enjoyment. So he all the time dwells upon that ananda which he could see as his own nature when his mind could abide in the self which was pure and, and free and the boundless. And so he all the time dwells upon that. That's, we also have an experience that the mind goes back. Sometimes it happens that even you are visiting a place like go to, I don't know, Grand Canyon for example. All of a sudden you are you face that wonderful panorama and all of a sudden, I mean, you know, you forget everything momentarily. And that that particular scene then gets ingrained in your mind and again and again you see that. People say sometimes when they go to the Himalayas and when they experience that grandeur of the Himalayas and also a certain sanctity associated with that and everything. And that doesn't go every time it says, I close my eyes, that thing comes before me. Such a capturing experience it was that it captured the mind and then that experience comes back again and again. And similarly also, even though one is doing one's day-to-day activities, the one all the time keeps on only thinking about that, the self. And thus, that, that is the reason how he will be able to gain a, an abidance completely. So, even a momentary conviction, a momentary apprehension of oneself goes a long way to make it then slowly. Even Ramana Maharshi used to say that he had just once, he didn't even know anything, just a boy of sixteen it seems. And it's a famous experience of death that he went through. Somebody talked to him about death or maybe I think he even saw the death of someone. And he was wondering what happens when somebody dies? And he really wanted to uh, recreate create that experience for himself. So he went upstairs in his room alone and he was lying down like shava, like, like a corpse. And slowly and slowly he could withdraw his attention from the body and he could see that now my body is without any emotion. It is dead. It's lifeless. And so thus he, he was conscious all right, but he just became free from identification of the body and everything all of a sudden. And he says that time a conviction came to him that he is not the body, that I am, I am Chaitanya. I am the consciousness. And that conviction that came to him always remained with him. He says, that always remained with me. Subsequently also. Of course, after that, after a short time he left home also. But he says, that always his guiding conviction, that always guided him. And thus, even when once we have that conviction or that apprehension, that always remains with us and forms a basis, um, it, it, it then becomes a guiding factor. And then one doesn't get deviated or distracted even through other day-to-day activities. This is what is meant. That idea is further continued. The discussion we'll see tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavantau Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Shanti
तेशांति हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः